Woodworking has always been a great creative outlet for me. And I finally have a workshop where I can set up everything just how I want it. I've been filling it with a lot of great old tools that have been handed down from all of the woodworkers in my family. Today, I'm installing a table saw and something I've always wanted, which is a central dust collection system. I got it in pieces, but instead of assembling it the way it was supposed to on a platform, I decided I wanted to see if I could turn these components into something better, something that doesn't take up as much floor space and ideally doesn't use any of these bag filters. So of course, I'm doing the design work in SolidWorks. First thing I did is reverse engineer all the major parts using sketch pictures and measurements and I assembled it as it was intended so I could kind of get an idea of what a back pressure baseline would be in flow. As long as the filters weren't clogged up, the system always tended to operate with a back pressure of around one to two inches of water. So that's kind of my target. Anything higher than that would put me at a disadvantage from the start. Now my first idea was to simplify things and just take the cyclone and tuck it into the corner. I would mount the blower directly to the cyclone and use a vertical chute to vent outside up high. That way I would need no filter because it was just gonna be blowing out into the woods and theoretically the back pressure would be fine. But when I ran that max airflow, the back pressure was up around eight inches of water. Even completely removing the top of that vertical chute so it was open left me with almost six inches of water drop. So the single cyclone idea was a total bust. I'm really glad I checked it before I started buying materials. So the system seems to work best with two cyclones. I do need something here at the bottom to collect the dust, but that top section of this could just be cut off completely and replaced with a flat box. This design gives me a pressure drop of about a half an inch of water. Compare that to the two inches with the bags or the six inches with the cyclone. I couldn't get it low enough to turn it into a workbench, so I went ahead and just went up with it and actually mounted that uh, structurally from the trusses. That way I could vent it directly out of the side of the building, and then that puts the bags in easy reach to be unloaded. They're easy to see. Uh, it also gave me plenty of space underneath to fit my tools. So I built and mounted the box, added an oak plank for stylish support underneath the motor and the bags, but when I went to go wire it up, there were two separate sets of wires feeding into the unit, and there were no labels on which one was supposed to be used. Now, I remember my grandpa had installed a light switch near the saw so he could turn the blower on and off remotely. So obviously he modified it somehow, but I'm not really sure how or if it was even safe. So I took some notes on where all the various wires connected up and I jumped into SolidWorks Electrical. I need a relay coil, power and signal contacts, an overload, and then I've got the momentary switches that originally came with the device as well as the modified switch that I knew my grandfather had, and I just started running all the wires to see how it worked. It turns out the switch was just in series with the power running to the coil. It also ran through the overload, so it was low current going through the switch, and it was protected by that overload relay. The momentary switches were actually completely disconnected once I started running all the wires, and the momentary start button was broken anyways, which is probably when he added the remote switch. So now I've got the system installed, I'm not wasting any floor space, and I get so much flow, I haven't even had to install any blast gates yet. The clear bags make it look really cool when it's running, and it fits the overall style that I'm going for in this shop, which is a bit of an homage to the builders and woodworkers in my family, who taught me about woodworking, and construction, inspired me to do these kinds of big things. By using SolidWorks, I can try out any big audacious ideas and plan everything out carefully before I gather my materials and get to work. It's a whole lot cheaper and easier to fail or make a bad turn inside the computer than it is to do it out in the real world. If you have questions about your design and you want to see how SolidWorks might be able to help you, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. And now I'm going to capture my camera girl. You gotta say it really loud so everybody can hear. Like and subscribe. That's great. High five. Good job.